Hi there guys, so let's jump right in and get started. Now this video is about upgrading a cache pool or cache drive, whether physically to a new device, or like I'm going to be doing in this video, changing the format of the device from what it is now to ZFS, thanks to this being recently added to the latest version of Unraid, Unraid 6.12. Now physically swapping the cache drive or just reformatting the cache, the process is exactly the same. Now in the last video, people were asking, is it possible to do an in-place reformatting of a drive whilst retaining all of the data? Now I know many people out there are hoping it might be possible to keep all of the data in place, either on a cache drive or on the array, and have it reformat kind of in the background, keeping all the data in place and just converting the file system that way. Well, I'd love to be able to say yes it is, but then I'd just be lying. Unfortunately, that isn't possible. But it is actually remarkably easy to temporarily move the data elsewhere and reformat a cache pool or reformat an individual drive in the Unraid array to another file system such as ZFS. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the cache pool. And in an upcoming video, we're going to be looking at how we can reformat a drive in the array without damaging parity at all. So it's quite obvious why we might want to have our cache pool reformatted to ZFS. We can have things like our app data or our VMV disks there and use all of the advanced features of the ZFS for snapshots, cloning and replication. But it might not be quite so obvious why we might want just to have, say, one disk in the array to be ZFS. Well, when we've got two Z pools, we can replicate one to the other. While I'm not going to really go into it in this video, but it's a great way to be able to actually back things up using snapshots and ZFS replication, making our server bulletproof. But all of that's coming in future videos. But for now, let's just see how we can create our first Z pool using our existing cache drive, just reformatting it into ZFS. Okay, so let's jump across onto a server and have a look. Now you'll see the setup is a little different than the last video. I've got a small array of one parity, two data drives that are both XFS, a cache drive, which is also XFS. So what we're going to do in this video, change our cache drive from XFS or ButterFS to a ZFS, the cache drive. And there are some really good advantages to doing this. Now, if I look on this drive here, we can see that there's the app data share, the domain share, and the system share. So obviously, all of this needs to be moved somewhere else so we can reformat this drive as ZFS and then put the data back. Now, of course, the process would be exactly the same if, in fact, we didn't want to keep this cache, we just wanted to upgrade it to a larger drive. Just after the first stage of moving the data off the disk, we then shut down the Unraid server, swap it, start it up, assign it, and then format it in the file system that we want. And in this video, we'll be looking at both scenarios, but let's do the first step first. Let's move the data off the cache drive onto the array. Now, this is actually really easy to do. If I go to the shares tab here, and we can see here the shares that I want to move, that's app data, domains, and the system share here. So first, let's click onto app data, and we can see here the primary storage location is set to cache, which is the name of my pool. So what I need to do is I need to enable the secondary storage here, and that should be set to array. And once I've done that, I can choose how the mover performs. At the moment, when I run mover, it will move stuff from the cache onto the array. So that's the same as back in the old days when we had use cache yes. When mover runs, it just moves the new files in that share from the cache drive, which is now our primary storage, to the secondary storage, the array. So obviously, if yours was set from moving from the array to cache, that would be wrong. Just make sure it's set to move it from the name of your pool to the array. And then when we run mover, it will move all of the data from that share onto the array. So with that done, let's click on to apply and done. And I'm going to do the same for the domain share. I'm going to enable the secondary storage. Make sure the mover is set from cache. Now, remember, your pool might not be called cache. It may be called something else. But basically, we just want it moving from the pool 
to the array. The destination should just be the array. And lastly, let's do the system share here. And we can see that set from array to cache because it's trying to keep everything on the cache drive. So for this share, we need to change it from cache to array. Okay, so we set how we want the shares now, but we don't want to run mover quite yet because at the moment, the VM service is running and although no VMs are actually running, the system files for this are in use. And also, I've got a Docker container running here, my MB container is running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings here and first I'm going to go to VM manager and I'm going to set this to no so it's not running. So now it's not running, I'm going to click on to done and I'm going to do the same now by clicking on Docker and disabling the Docker service as well. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just stop all the Docker containers in the VMs. Well, the reason for that is because when these services are running, there's files being used in the system share here for Docker. The Docker image would be in use. And for VMs, the libvirt file would be in use. And that's whether containers or VMs are running or not. So now with those stopped, all of the data from in here will be able to move. If I hadn't done, the files would have been in use and they wouldn't have moved off the cache drive and I would have had a bit of a problem. So all we need to do now is click onto main, scroll down to the bottom and click on move. And we just need to let mover run and move all of those files. It might take a little while if there's a lot of files and we'll know it's finished because the button will no longer be greyed out and we won't see this message here saying disabled mover is running. And if we scroll up here, we can see that move is working. We can see the reads from the cache drive here and the writes here going onto the array disks. So it looks like we've got about 74 gigs to move across. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's done. OK, so we can see that move is completed now because the button's no longer greyed out. And if we go to the cache drive here, we can see there's no folders present here. So all of the data has been moved onto the array. We can see app data, domains, and the system share all here. So now what we want to do is we want to stop the array. And at this point here, if we wanted to, we could actually shut the whole server down and we could swap this cache drive for a larger drive. So let's look at that scenario now and do that. And with the server shut down, we could then remove the cache drive and put a larger one in. With that done, we'd then restart the server. And with the server started back up, it would say that we're missing the cache drive. So then we'd select the new drive that we'd want to use for our cache. Now, obviously, you'd probably want to use an SSD. This is just for demonstration purposes. And before starting the array, we could just put the file system to either ZFS or in fact any other file system we wanted to format the cache with. And with that done, we'd just have to start up the array. We'd be warned of an unmountable disk, that's perfectly normal. We'd check format the drive and we can see here it's going to format the cache. And I just click format and now our cache drive, its file system is ZFS. OK, so before moving on, Let's rewind because in my server, I'm not actually swapping the cache. I'm actually just going to reformat the original one. So let's rewind back to there. OK, so here we are back where we were before. Move has just run and our cache drive's empty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the array. And now with the array stopped, I'm going to click onto the pool name here. Mine's called cache. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto arrays. I'm going to need to type in the name of the pool and mine's called cache. So once it's cleared, I'm going to go across here to file system and I'm going to choose ZFS. And on this server, I'm going to leave the compression off. The only reason being is it's an old 10 year old dual core CPU. So I think for this server, probably better not to actually stress the CPU at all. OK, so with that done, I'm going to click on to apply and done. And now I'm going to scroll down start up the array and it's going to tell us that the cache drive is unmountable so i'm going to check this box here to be able to format it 
click OK and then format the drive. OK, so now Unraid's going to format this drive in ZFS. OK, so there we have it. The drive's formatted. It's still empty. Just now it's in ZFS. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This is all very well and good for a cache pool that only had one drive in it. But what about maybe a ButterFS mirror? How do we go about changing the file format on that? Well, let's go across to another server and we'll take a quick look. OK, so on this server here, you'll see there's a two drive ButterFS pool here. It's a RAID 1 mirror, giving me a usable space of one terabyte. So just as before, all we need to do is to stop the array. So with the array stopped, just like we did for the single disk pool, we click on the name of the pool, the top one here, and click onto arrays and pop the name of the pool in. Click proceed. And with that done now, we can choose the file format. So if I was to choose ZFS now with the two disks, I've got a choice of a RAID 0, which I'm definitely not going to do, or a mirror. So the mirror is exactly the same as the RAID 1 in ButterFS, just mirroring the two drives together. So if I was to click apply now, done, and then start the array, it would format the pool like that. But in fact, I don't want to have just a two disk pool because I'm using ZFS. I can use three drives and stripe the data across. So I'm going to add another drive to the mix. Click onto the name of the pool. Now I could have a mirror of all of these three drives. So I'd have kind of triple redundancy, but I'm going to use RAID Z and this will make a RAID Z1 pool. And out of the three terabytes that we've assigned from the three one terabyte drives, it will give us a usable space of two terabytes. So let's start the array and format these drives. OK, so there we have it. The two drive ButterFS pool converted into a three drive ZFS pool. Easy. So let's go back across to the server we are working on a moment ago. OK, so that's done. Now the cache drive is ZFS. Of course, there's nothing on it. All of our shares are on the main array. The app data domains and system, they need to be moved back. And to do that, I'm going to go to shares here. And here on the shares tab, we can see that move is set to move stuff from the cache to the array for these three shares. That's how we move the data here. So basically all we need to do now is reverse that is to have mover move stuff from the array back to the cache. So I'm going to change that now. Mover action I'm going to change to array to cache. And I'm going to do that for the other two shares as well. OK, so it's nice and easy to see what's going to happen. This is a nice touch in Unraid 6.12. So app data is going from array to cache. So's domains and so system. So with that done, we can now run mover again and wait for the data to be put onto the cache drive. Right, OK, if we scroll down, we can see move is finished because the button's no longer greyed out. And if I take a look on the cache here, here's my app data domains and system share. They've been moved off the disk one, which now only has the ISOs, media and a test share. OK. So now we can start back up the Docker service and the same for the VM service here. And so with that done, let's just test out a container. Let's take a look if MB is working. OK, great. Everything's running. So as you can see in this video, it's really easy to either swap out your cache drive for a larger one or just reformat the one you've got into a different file system. So what about upcoming videos? Well, we're going to have a look at actually swapping out an array disk, reformatting that in ZFS and doing that without having to rebuild the parity. We'll be looking at how we can actually auto convert inside a share all of the top level folders into data sets. This is very useful for your app data. So each container can have its own data set, allowing you to snapshot it, allowing for easy recovery and rollback in case of a problem. Also, we'll be looking at auto snapshotting and auto replication from data set to data set. So keep an eye out for all these videos, the first of which should be here probably this weekend and the others coming over the next week or two. 
But if you like this video, then please hit up that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share the video with anyone else who you think might find it useful. Now, as always, I want to give a huge thanks to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Without you, I really wouldn't be able to make these videos. Anyway guys, so it's getting late here, so it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.